Over on YouTube, like in the comments, and on Facebook, on the Facebook page, I've received some great questions and comments. I'm going to address some of them now. My name is Paul Tran, and this is Paul Tran, Baker Man. First off, I went to the National March for Science. That was so much fun. Personal. It's about our friends, our neighbors, the people we love. Now take a I'm look at the enough, science right? is under attack. <laughs> They're specifically targeting science that protects our health, Take our care. safety. And at the end of it, I actually got a small fever. So pro tip, you know, dress warmly and <laughs> um, stay dry during a rainy protest in DC. It's one of the great things about living in DC is that I get to see these kind of things and participate in these sort of things. And I was surrounded by people who were scientists and people who just supported science. And some of y'all know that it's like I'm a really big proponent of like science because, you know, I'm trying to help with some of that here. And so I'm glad I got to represent a little bit. See, so yeah, first comments from Kev D-Man. Kev D-Man. Kev, oh, Kev D-Man. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> he gives us a little bit of a song. Uh... Look, it's my cat. <laughs> oh, hi. Hello. Okay. Someone woke up from their nap. So I'm gonna try this out. Let's see. Butter, butter, flower, sugar, king cake. Mauve, gold, and green. Little baby was seen. I'm not a singer. <laughs> On the king cake video, Susan asks, question, when you are putting the shoe on top of a base, do you have to be careful to pile it on top and not let it run over in the baking pan, or does it matter? Well, in that case, it, it'll be fine because there's so much butter in the shoe pastry itself that it's not gonna stick too badly to the pan. And you really want it to cover your base completely because that's what's gonna like um, cause that steam in the butter to puff up and get trapped. So that's what we want. So, did I answer that question right? When you're putting the shoe on top of the base, do you have to be careful to pile it on top and not letting it run over the baking pan? It'll be fine. Just make sure that you cover the pastry base completely. Steven says, the cookies are delicious. Y'all, Steven made these cookies at home and sent me a picture. They look fantastic. They look so appealing. They have a raspberry cherry jam filling. Uh, I really, really w wish I could taste them, but he honored me just by letting me see them. Like he tagged me on um, Instagram at hashtag Paul Tram Baker Man. And anytime you want me to see something that you've done, let me know, because uh, I would love to see your bakes and he let me see it. They're beautiful, right? I kept the dough in the refrigerator overnight. It needed more than 20 minutes to warm before rolling though. So just a little trick that I could show you. I just happened to have a little bit of dough in the refrigerator. So take your rolling pin and just whack it. <laughs> whack it a few times and it's gonna soften right up. Just, and for the experimental butter cookie recipe with the five different kinds of butter cookies, where my taste testers tried all the different types of butter cookies. There was one that most did not like with the vegan butter. She says, oh, I did want to ask what brand of vegan butter you used so I can avoid it. I 
don't want to say. I could just say that it's a very, very popular brand of vegan butter. Um, <laughs> I'll just say Terra Libra. <laughs> Unfortunately for this uh, butter cookie recipe, it did not taste as expected. A little more plant-like. I think somebody said it tastes like seaweed. <laughs> Or, or a healthy cookie. Oh. No <laughs> way. Like a healthy cookie. Um. I've used it before in buttercreams, and it was really good. And you can't really tell that it's plant-based at all. So. It's sometimes really, really good, and in this case, it just, on four out of five opinions, it just wasn't that great. Tuan says, nice video, Paul. So quick and easy. I'm sure she's talking about the frozen yogurt, not me. Steve asks, What's the difference between using Polish and bread and just adding yeast to your bread recipe and letting it sit? When you make Polish, you're making a controlled f flavor bomb, basically. You're creating a lot more wild yeast. Hi. Which is nice. <laughs> And you're creating also a nice flavor bomb because like you're creating like a lot more fermentation that's happening and when you do it slowly and just over a certain amount of time, like either a few hours or overnight, then you're creating more flavor and um, you're also doing some things to the proteins themselves to actually create like a nicer texture and then a little bit more crispy crust. And you just don't get that if you just make a bread with a um, yeast and then l process it all and then bake it off immediately. Toy Shark's attack says, That magnet is familiar. Yes! That magnet is familiar because El Enemy is one of the hosts on that and she made me this picture. It's a beautiful. Her mother is also an artist and she made this magnet. And so I actually kind of have this magnet and this picture on the fridge in the background a lot. This is a better looking tradition than I actually am. Ah, Instagram. Oh, when I made the Swiss meringue, I really wanted to take a bite of it right then. So there's a video on loop there where I'm just like about to do it. And Erica Sasspant says, oh, I see the longing in your eyes. Hungry eyes. For people's different baking things and just kitchen things, that was pretty exciting to see so many people write back and saying like, Giselle Eva says, I have a ceramic knife that I use daily. Does my French press count? I say yes. Because that makes me insanely happy too. Rugo Photo says, My pizza stone is my standard when baking anything that needs a flat surface. I miss my pizza stone. You're lucky. Sometimes I make great pizza, it just could be so much better on a stone. <laughs> JR Knotts says, Junior Knotts <laughs> says, My Vitamix. I hear they're fantastic. 88 Toad says, A bun pan. Love the versatility of a bun pan. There's so much you can do with a bun pan, y'all. You can make cake. You can make meatloaf. <laughs> you can make re ice rings to put into your punch bowl. And then you dip your ladle in the middle of that bun ice. It's really nice and festive. The Heather Brown says, Veggie Spiralizer. Just got it. Absolutely love it. I got one from... For Christmas one day? No. I got one for... As, I got a Spiralizer one year for, like, I think it was my birthday. I use it so much. I make so many, like, zucchini noodles. Zoodles. Zoodles. 
Max Rex says, rubber spatula. Sounds boring, but I, it gets used every day. And it doesn't matter how boring it gets. If you're using it every day, then it's great. It's fantastic. That makes it key. I got hired to make a fondant panda and I took a photo of me doing it one day. So I thought, hey, I'll take a share this photo on um, Instagram. And our Gilbert mentor says, new segment, fun with fondant. I think that'll be fun. I think I will do a fun with fondant segment one day. What do you think? I think, yeah. Dawn shared her Irish soda bread with us on the fan page and it looks great. She said it was inspired. Ugh. Dawn, your Irish soda bread are so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Check out Marsha and her assistants very festive and special Easter cake. It is adorable. Y'all, thank you for sharing that with me. <laughs> I like all the grass and the bunnies. So those are the, some of the questions and the comments that you've left me over the last 16 videos. I really appreciate it. It means so much that y'all have taken the time to comment and ask me questions, that you've reached out, that you've shared, that you subscribed. So if you haven't or you still will, please do keep it up because I think this all makes it a lot more fun and it really makes me think that like I'm part of something more, this community that's with you. And thank you so much.